so much so that we know that God has done so much for us yes. that we cannot begin to tell it, tell it all. You've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I have 10,000 tongues, it still would not be enough. No. me from well and look where I am today
Jehovah, God, we're mindful on this Resurrection Sunday just how much you have done for us. So much so, God, that we get to take note of the hymn that would just say, up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. And he arose a victor from the dark domain. And he lives forever with his thanks to reign. He arose. He arose. Hallelujah. Christ arose. Father, we come before you. And we pause to give you thanks today. For today, what we call it Resurrection Sunday, we get to call it a victory day, a celebration day. God, that up from the grave that you arose. God, we're thankful for what you did on Calvary for us. For without the shedding of blood, oh God, there is no remission of sin for us. And we're thankful. We pause, God, to give you thanks for even just today. God, how you would see us through a, a trying week, oh God, but you were ever present. God, we're thankful that you would keep us through the night and wake us up this morning that we get to celebrate with you, oh God, for some didn't make it through the night. God, we're thankful that we get to worship you in liberty and in truth today because that's not an opportunity everyone gets to have publicly, God, and we're thankful. We're thankful, God, of how you kept us, God. We're thankful of how you were a deliverer. How this week, God, we called on you and you were an ever-present help in time of trouble. God, how we called on you this week and you were a deliverer for us. How we called on you this week, oh God, and you were a comfort for us. How we called on you this week, God, and you made a way where there seemed to have been no way. God, how we called on you, God, and you provided peace, oh God. How we called on you, God, and we had joy that was so unspeakable even in the midst of trials God we're thankful 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 and we're grateful God and we say hallelujah to your name and so today God we invite you to have your way in this service God that everything that be done will be to your name's honor and to your name's glory God may you just continue to be lifted up and your people be edified today God, would you win a soul for your kingdom today? God, would you pierce our hearts and equip us to receive the word of the Lord? We know it is a good one, and we're thankful for your men servant who gets to stand behind the sacred desk today. So, God, would you hide him from on high today? God, would you allow him to speak with sincerity, with simplicity, God, but most of all with truth today, God? We're thankful, we're thankful, we're thankful, and we're excited about what you get to do. Hallelujah to your name. God, you really are risen and risen indeed. Hallelujah, God, we give you glory. We invite you to have your way. Now, God, would you remove every earthly and worldly care from us today that we concentrate wholly and solely upon you. And we're even mindful, God, that our ways were not yours and our thoughts weren't even that too. So would you forgive us? God, and would you let our praise be a sweet fragrance and a sacrifice unto you today? Would you do that for us? And we'll be careful to give you more glory, more honor, and more praise. That will be our humble prayer in Jesus' name today. Amen. Amen. And amen. Family, welcome into the house of the Lord. Yeah, it's good for us to be in the house of the Lord today. And I know that we're in for a good time because surely the presence of the Lord is in this place and we can feel him moving. And so I just want to say welcome to you. If you were joining us by Facebook this morning, welcome to you wherever you are. We pray that the spirit of the Lord will continue to rest, rule, and abide with you and that you would have a joyful and exciting time with us. And so I know that we have friends and family, some we haven't seen um, in a while. And so I'm excited to have you in the house of the Lord. And we pray that you would have a joyful and a fruitful time in the Lord with us this morning. And so we're going to continue with our um, service this morning as we just get ready to have something special for you this morning. And so I knew we were going to sing, but I think we're just going to 
allow the um, spirit of the Lord to just move in this place because I'm excited about what is about to happen. And so we will leave and um, I pray that you will be blessed um, this morning by what um, takes place. So just as that special um, ministry just comes, we're just going to bless the name of the Lord this morning. Good morning, church. As we celebrate resurrection, Christ's resurrection today, let's also remember what Christ did for us in just these last few years. Of the goodness of God. 
us some praise. Yes. <laughs> Here he is. Whether you felt like it or not, he was still good to you. Whether you felt like it or not, his goodness was running after you. Whether you felt like it or not, he was still faithful to you. Whether you felt like it or not, our God is still worthy of our praise. Take a minute and say, I will sing of the goodness, the goodness of our God. Come on, you know what you've been through. And you're still here. You're still here. Our God has been good and faithful all my life. I will sing today of the goodness. His goodness is running after. It's running after me. Come on, and that was just in a span of two years, but there's so much more to our story. God, we worship you today. God, we give you glory today. God, we give you honor today. God, we say that you are worthy of our praise. God, today we say that there is none like you. I will sing of your goodness and your mercy today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, just offer him your highest praise. Lift up your hallelujah. We need to learn Come on. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 What a mighty. What a mighty. What a mighty God. God on Resurrection Sunday. These are not tears of sadness, God. They're tears of joy of just how much you, you've done for us. Truly, we cannot tell it all. Amen. Amen. And so, I know that we have I know that we have something else special coming our way. Is he hiding? I do. I do, see, but we're supposed to have some special music at this time. I, I, is he here? No? Okay. So I have not seen him, so I'm I'm not going to say as yet unless he slips through the door, but we were to have a, a special surprise. But that being said, God is still God and God is still good. Amen. Yeah, and so that means that we... tell you what I feel like it's not like him to not show up and so whatever is happening I God, know God is already there and if he's to be here God will send him at the appointed time but if not God would you just send a word wherever he is and minister not just to him but to be with us even at this time so we're gonna let you come pastor and do what you do and share with us as you've been in fellowship um, this morning so without delay, then we'll have the word of the Lord. Lift him up, lift him up. Till he speaks from eternity. Maybe that's too low. He said, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me.
Come on, let's praise him like you know him this morning. Let's praise him like you know him. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy. We have come from a mighty long way, even as a country. Uh, I think that the, the, the uh, caption said 20, 2020, and all this madness started. And truly, it has been madness for the country and even for the world. But he's brought us a mighty long way. I, 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 I was touched, mesmerized, and bordering on tears when we look back and see he's done so much for us. We cannot tell it all. To see an empty sanctuary to a full sanctuary. Yes. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation that you have placed in my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in your sight. Reach us with your word. Teach us through your word. Lift us by your spirit. Because you've done so much for us, we cannot tell it all. Jehovah, you're more than enough. We surrender ourselves to this word today. May it bring comfort to some and conviction to others. But at the end of it all, may we know that Jesus lives. He reigns forevermore. And that one day, we shall reign with him. Come and thy people bless. Give thy word success. Spirit of holiness, on us descend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn in your Bibles, please, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 28 and also 1 Peter chapter 1. Matthew's Gospel, the very last chapter in the book of Matthew, and the first chapter of 1 Peter chapter 1. Reading down from verse 1 to verse 8. Now after the Sabbath day, Near dawn on the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala and the other Mary went to take a look at the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the boulder back and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his garments as white as snow. And those keeping guard were so frightened at the sight of him that they were agitated and they trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, to the women, do not be alarmed and frightened, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he said he would do. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they left the tomb hastily with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. First Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 to verse 5. Praised 
Honored, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. By his boundless mercy, we have been born again to an ever-living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Born anew into an inheritance which is beyond the reach of change and decay, imperishable, unsullied, and unfading, reserved in heaven for you who are guarded by God's power through your faith till you fully inherit that final salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. He's alive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say it again because I rehearsed it in my mind. He's alive. I want you to go with me to the tomb in your mind and see the awe and the reverence that the ladies had when the angels spoke to them. Hear the excitement and the exuberance and the relief and the anticipation because you have to remember that Jesus said he would come back. Now for us who are here today, we are still waiting for another return. If he came back the first time, we can surely depend upon his word that he's coming back one more time. And so I say to you for the third time, he's alive. I want you to hear the communication going out through the community at that time resonating through the region. Some thought it was gossip Others thought it was gospel. Gospel simply means it was good news coming back. This meant that all things were possible. This meant that there was nothing that Jesus could not do in his existence in the earth. If you remember the stories leading up to this and the many miracles and great works that we talked about last week that Jesus did. Remember the blind man? Remember the woman who was sick for 18 years? Remember the feeding of the 5,000? Don't tell me that you can get all those fish sandwiches out of five loaves and two fish. You try it one day. You better hope that God is with you. Because somebody's going to be hungry at the end of it all. But my Bible tells me that when the meal was over, that people went home with baskets full. Don't tell me God is not a miracle working God. All things became possible and the crux of the story is is that when he said, if you destroy this body, this temple, give me three days. My father's going to work with me on day one. I'm going to rest from my bruising and my beatings. On day two, I'm going to prepare to come up out of the tomb. On day three, you will see me. I wish I had a church here this morning. Everything that he said would happen, happened. Can I encourage you and caution others that everything that he said in our time that would happen is happening. Right before our very eyes. And it just behooves us to get ready for his second return. Get ready, get prepared. Can I branch off and say that we get ready for a lot of things? Bermudians are world travelers. 
We make sure we got the credit card paid down. I'm coming for you right now. We make sure that we've got all the clothes that we need depending upon the geographical location where we are going. We make sure that our reservation is made. We make sure that everything's intact so that nothing goes wrong with the trip. I want to let you know, you need to make sure you're ready so that when Jesus comes, nothing will go wrong with the trip. That we will be ready for his soon coming. The person and the hope that rested on him and the very life that he had he said they could have. We look at this and we see that Jesus was raised to prove his authority. Some people need proof. He was raised to prove that when he came back and when he declared all authority, all power. See, don't you worry about what's happening in Ukraine. We ought to pray for him. We ought to, we ought to give if we can, whatever. But don't you worry about what's happening. God's watching. Don't you worry about what's happening over there in Iraq and Iran. We ought to pray about it. We ought to do what we can. But God's watching. God's time clock is ticking. And all authority, regardless of what you see, hear, think, or feel, all authority has been given to him in heaven and earth. And he rules and he reigns and he is the one that watches the clock. He said, no man knows the day nor the hour. He says, all I want you to do as people of the earth is hear my word and prepare for my return and to walk in faith because if I said it, it shall surely come to pass. Not only was he raised to prove his authority, but he reigns to provide salvation. I'm so glad I'm saved this morning. No, I'm, I'm bragging on Jesus because I didn't save myself. You didn't save yourself. You didn't save yourself. You didn't save yourself. We've been saved by grace. His grace through our faith. He reigns to provide salvation. That is the forgiveness of sins. And there are many people in the world today that think that they don't need forgiveness. The Bible says all have sinned. And if you have sinned, you need forgiveness. And he's the only one that can provide it. He provides salvation and he reigns to provide that. We have in this forgiveness of sins. Freedom. I'm just going back to last week, just a moment. Freedom from the stress and distress that sin causes. Sin has caused havoc in our world. We call it mistakes. We call it this. We call it that. The Bible calls it sin. It is transgressing God's word, God's commands. And then we find out that the fallout from it, we can't handle it. But we understand that when Jesus comes and forgives our sins and we turn away from it, some of the distress is moved. Some of the stress is gone. Are you in the house this morning? I said that he reigns to provide that. And thanks be to God that after all of that is said and done, I understand what this word salvation means and what it does and what it brings. Salvation in the Jewish custom, in the Jewish theology, the salvation means security. Salvation means prosperity in the truest sense. Salvation means peace. Salvation means happiness. And I'm looking at people this morning who have found security. Oh, yo, ain't going to. I'm looking at people who have found true prosperity. That you open your fridge when you go home this afternoon and everything that you want is there because you put it there because God provided that you could put it there. Help me, Jesus, this morning. Hallelujah. We have security. We have prosperity. We have peace. The Bible says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next, lastly, we have happiness. A lot of the things that we see that go on around us don't make us happy, but there is something bigger, better, and deeper 
going on within each and every one of us that helps us to look past what I see in the natural eye. And when I see him with the eye of faith, I get happy. I said with the eye of faith, when I see him, I get happy. So we understand that he reigns to provide salvation. If you're not enjoying the full package, come back to the table. Because there's more at the table for you. I'm saying to you, there's more at the table for you. The whole package is for everybody. I want mine, and if you don't get yours, I'm going to take yours too. Listen, not only is he raised to prove his authority, he reigns to provide salvation, and he is revered for promoting his kingdom. He says to us, go. Go tell somebody what I've done for you. Go into all the world and preach the good news, teaching people to observe everything that I've commanded you. And he says, and lo, and behold, I am with you always, even until the end. You don't have to be afraid if nobody's with you. But remember, he did send the disciples out two by two, but you're going to find yourself, you might be on your own sometime. But fear not, he says, I will be with you. And he is revered. Don't you revere him this morning? That word revere means I stand in awe of his great works. And you know what? I stand in awe of the great works that he's doing in people. When we submit and surrender to the authority and the lordship of Jesus Christ, and his word, and his spirit, something wonderful happens. And it's possible that it happens on a daily basis. See, Paul says, I die daily. I die to myself daily so that I can live unto Christ. And isn't it wonderful how change takes place in the life? Is there anybody in here that's been changed? I've been reborn, and my life has been rearranged. What a difference it makes since the Lord came to stay in my life. i got to get through this. Praise God. I've been changed. Jesus wasn't raised, listen to this, to surrender to the human authorities again. They came to arrest him in Gethsemane. There will be no more arrest warrants. I'm about to shout this morning. He wasn't raised to surrender to human authorities. He wasn't raised to suffer again. The 39 licks on his back and the thorns in his head and the spear in his side. He wasn't raised to go through that again. He was not raised to offer himself a sacrifice for the second time. Are you listening to what the Spirit's saying? And he wasn't raised to die again. There will be no more Good Fridays as we know them. There will be no more suffering as we know them. When he comes back, He's coming back to be crowned Lord of all. And he is coming back. Do you understand that when we understand about this sacrifice, he is coming back to live and reign forever. And one day, this is what makes church people happy. The Bible says, and we shall reign with him. This makes us happy. This makes us steadfast. Immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Something's coming for the faithful believer. Something's coming for the faithful follower. Something's coming for the worshiper. I'm telling you, one day we shall reign with him and we will live, we will live forever. How you say, Pastor? Because the Bible says that this mortal shall put on immortality oh Jesus turn to 1st Corinthians chapter 15 and if you look at 1st Corinthians chapter 15 you will see how Paul describes 
because we need a body that's changed. Listen, all the sickness that's going on, all the disease that's going on, all the suffering that's going on is going to come to an end. The Bible says that one day there will be no more crying, no more suffering, no more sorrow, no more crying. Why? Because the former things will have passed away and it's going to be a brand new day. Are you listening to what the Spirit's saying this morning? 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and if you look beginning at, I believe, verse 51, it says this. Paul says, take notice. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth, an event decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. We shall all be transformed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the last trumpet call. For the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable. That means there will be no more sickness, no more decay, no more dying. If you don't have something to look forward to this morning, you can look forward to this. Because it's on the horizon. He says, and we will be free and immune from decay and we shall be changed and transformed. Look at verse 3. For this perishable... This part of us must put on the imperishable nature. And this mortal part of us, this nature that is capable of dying, must put on immortality, freedom from death. And when this perishable puts on the imperishable, and this that was capable of dying puts on freedom from death, then shall be fulfilled the scripture that says, Death! Is swallowed up in victory, utterly vanquished forever in and unto victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Now, sin is the sting of death, and sin exercises its power upon the soul through the abuse of the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus wasn't raised to surrender. He wasn't raised to surrender to human authorities again, going through the same thing. He wasn't raised to suffer again. He wasn't raised to sacrifice again. He wasn't raised to die again. I want to show you something in the book of Hebrews. This may turn out into a little Bible study. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 11, this is important stuff. We need to know what the scriptures teach. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 11, this talks about the high priest or the priest in, in contrast to Jesus. It says, furthermore, every human priest stands at his altar of service, ministering daily. People had to bring lambs and stuff to the priest every day. The priest was getting tired. Every day he had to deal with people and sacrifices for sins that were only temporary. He says, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over again, which were never able to strip from every side of us the sins that envelop us and take them away. Whereas this one Christ, after he had suffered, how, what does it say? A single sacrifice for our sins that shall avail for all time. After he had offered that sacrifice, he sat down. I'm going to get happy. He sat down at the right hand of God there to wait until his enemies should be made a stool beneath his feet. Look at verse 14. For by a single offering, he has forever completely cleansed and perfected those who are consecrated and made holy. Pardon me for repeating myself, but that one sacrifice did it for everybody. 
for all time. And we can boast and rejoice. He's not coming back to surrender. He's not coming back to suffer. He's not coming back to sacrifice. He's coming back to reign forever. Peter writes about him. Peter writes about him. Peter writes about it. And Peter writes about us. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 down to verse 5, you will see that Peter writes about him, writes about it, the resurrection, and writes about us and offers, this is what Peter does. First of all, he offers profound and heartfelt praise. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, the first thing that Peter says was give him praise. Give him glory. Last week we talked about praise in the house. It seemingly, it ain't caught. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. If you came in a little bit late, I want to know if you heard the praise over by Word Workman's Club. Because the church ought to be up in praise for our God. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let's, let's give him some praise right now. He's worthy. I said he's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. For all he's done for me. Redeemed and set me free. It's because he's God. Peter writes about him and he says, I'm going to give him heartfelt thanks and praise. Honored, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He tells about him, he tells about it, he tells about us, and he offers this praise, and he tells the reason why he felt like he did and why we should. I, I want to pause right here and say, it's because I'm so thankful for the little things. Amen. Amen. It don't, listen, when, when you begin to grow in Christ and grow in the knowledge of him, yeah. It don't take that much to make you happy. Amen. I'm telling you, it don't take, listen, your happiness is embedded so yes. deeply yeah. in you. Yes. Praise God, peanut butter and jam will do. <laughs> leave me, Carol, leave me. Um, I, listen, it's the simple things that become so genuinely respected and so genuinely appreciated when you know that you are anchored and rooted in your God, and if you have peanut butter and jam today, I tell you that he'll provide a steak tomorrow. You better leave me alone, or a vegetable plate, or whatever it is you need. My God is more than enough. I'm gonna get happy. He's the God of abundance. And he will bless you in ways and means that you never dreamed of. That's why I got to praise him. That's why I got to thank him. And Peter says this. He says, listen, by his boundless mercy, we have been born again. By his bound, his limitless mercy. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 says, God who is rich in mercy. Has anybody ever showed mercy on you? Have you ever showed mercy on someone? Listen, what I wrote down what mercy means. Mercy means compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone when it was in your power to punish. And in God's rich mercy, that we were in the line for punishment. But mercy rewrote my life. I said, mercy, I should have fallen, my soul cast down. But mercy rewrote my life, rewrote the script. Hallelujah. Not a new job. Not a new environment, uh, not a new house, not a new car, not a new travel opportunity. Mercy rewrote my life. He said, by his boundless mercy, limitless mercy, 
because of that mercy, he says, we have been born again, born anew, born from above, a supernatural birth with super abundant benefits. Hallelujah. Through that mercy, I've been born anew. You know, Jesus said in John chapter three, he said, don't, don't be alarmed. Don't marvel when I say to you, you must be born again. Can I make this clear this morning for somebody who is struggling and you're only coming to church, but you don't know Christ. You must, if you're going to know him, you must be born of his spirit. And when you invite him in genuinely, the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead begins to work in you. This spirit brings life. And Jesus says that you must, in order to enter into his kingdom, you must be born into it. If you're here this morning, you're a smith. You're a Weller, you're a Simmons, you're whatever your last name is. You got it because you were born into that family. But if you're going to be named child of God, you're going to have to be born into that family. You can't just take up that name and say, I'm a child of God without the spirit of God. Amen. And how do I get born again? By inviting the one who died for me to come inside of me and live in me. We have been born anew. Jesus said, don't worry about it. Don't, don't marvel. Don't get up in a tizzy. Don't try to break it down with your theology. He said, you must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 6 has become one of my favorite verses. The Bible says God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts. Whereby we cry, Abba. Abba means daddy. Hey, yeah. Father, yeah. in the name of your son, Jesus. Yeah. And I do that because his spirit prompts me to. His spirit enables me to. And God has done this supernatural work. He says, and because you really are his, his sons, he has sent the Holy Spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. My body, you know what Paul said? Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, the good news. Listen, you've heard more good news in the last 20 minutes than you've heard for a long time. Listen, when you hear news that I can be saved forever, when you hear news that I can be filled, when you hear news that I can be provided for, when you hear news that says I can be set free, then you hear news that says I can be forgiven, you can read all the magazines and the publications and everything that you want to read. None of that's going to tell you all of that. But what you've heard this morning, I say to you, is all of that and a little bit more. By his mercy, we have been invited back into the family. You say... Father, what, what, what's this family about? His family. He created it. The church is one foundation. It's Jesus Christ, our Lord. The church is his creation by water and the word. From heaven, he came and sought you in me. To be his holy bride. And with his blood, he bought me. And for my life, he died. We have been, because of that mercy, we have been invited back. We have been accepted in. 
and we will be presented blameless one day. Many people don't come to Christ because they think that they can't make it. You can't without him. That's why he says link up. That's why he says get connected. People are fearful of coming to Christ because they say, I hear it all the time. I got to stop this. I got to stop that. I got to stop the other. I got to do. You don't have to do anything. Just come to him. Bring it all. Bring it all. Bring it all to him and watch him work. Watch him do his, as we say, do his thing. By his mercy, we have been invited back accepted in, and one day we will be presented blameless. Look at what he says. Let's finish this off now. We have been born again to an ever-living hope. An ever-living hope. And that hope comes in no other way than through the resurrection. If Jesus was not raised, the Bible says, we are still in our sins and we have no hope of eternal life. We look at this and we see this ever living hope, a never dying hope. Listen to what the Spirit spoke to my heart. He says, our hope is directly and inseparably linked to the life of Jesus, to his living, to his living and our joy is linked to our hope. That's where our joy comes from. Happiness comes and goes. You know, something happened tomorrow morning, I'm either sad or happy. But there's something behind my happiness that's deeper than my happiness. It's called joy. And the world didn't give it. The newspapers don't print it. And the world can't take it away. And the newspapers can't erase it. Are you listening now? We have been born into this family and an ever-living hope. That word hope is an eager, confident expectation that sustains a person while they wait patiently for future fulfillment. That hope sustains, keeps you in trial keeps you in trouble yeah. that hope keeps you looking toward yeah. the horizon yeah. keeps you keeps you going forward when the winds of adversity are blowing in your face when the devil is whispering in your ear when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay on christ the solid rock i stand all of the ground is sinking sand an eager, confident expectation that sustains me through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. You can't take Jesus out of the equation. He is the equation. He's the one we have to go to. He's the one we have to reckon with. He's the one that died. He's the one that deserves the praise. He, you cannot, we cannot take Jesus out of the equation. The church exists and thrives because of the name of Jesus, because of the life of Jesus, because of the power of Jesus, because of the purpose of Jesus. The church, this local church, that church down there, Bright Temple, that church over there with Mark Hall of Gospel Hall, all these little churches that exist throughout the island. You know what we need to be doing more? I, I pray that we are. It's just lifting up the name. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Through the resurrection, I want to say to somebody this morning, this is not a myth. This is not a hoax. This is not a fable. This is not a misprint. This is not a dream. This is a living reality. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. 
along life's narrow way. <laughs> he lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me. Oh, the church is here. You ask me how I know he lives. Something's going on on the inside. He lives within my heart. And we used to sing he lives about four times before we got to the end. He lives within my heart. Proof of his presence. If you look in the book of Acts chapter 1, this resurrection, we see proof of his presence. God told me to tell you this morning that you and you and you and us were proof. We're proof. Thank you for your enthusiasm. We are proof. He proved himself and showed himself alive. And the Bible says at one time he appeared to over 500 brethren at one time. There's proof of his presence. There's power through his spirit. What are you saying, Pastor? I have the power of the spirit to overcome evil and temptation. My power is not to lord it over other people. My power is to get to the devil's work on our lives and resist the devil. That's where the power comes in. Praise be to God. Proof of his presence, power through his spirit, and promise from his word and his track record. We've been born into an inheritance. I'm just doing this exegesis this morning, just doing line by line. This is good. Hallelujah. See, before I preach it, I have to receive it. I've been excited about this for days. I said, Lord, haste the day. Let me hasten till Sunday come. I want to get this thing out of me. Hallelujah. I feel like I've been in labor. for, And I don't know what that feels like. But I, <laughs> I, feel, but I feel like something's been wanting to burst. <laughs> Can you erase that, please? <laughs> Catch yourself, Dean. <laughs> Have we been born into an inheritance that cannot be stolen, cannot be duplicated? There are no term limits on it. There's no loss of value. There's no withering or fading. This Inheritance. Let's see what the Amplified says. It says, an inheritance which is beyond the reach. So every time something comes to try to get it, it just moves a little further. <laughs> Jesus. It's beyond the reach of change and decay. It's imperishable, unsullied, and unfading. And he says, where is it? It's reserved in heaven for you who believe. That's what the book says. Reserved in heaven for you who are being guarded by God's power through your faith. It is our faith that activates God's power. My belief, my resting, my trusting, my adhering to, my dependence, my reliance. That's what believing is. Believing is more than a mental assent to some words on a page. When Jesus says, trust me. You're going through your trial. Trust me. Don't get bent out of shape because of what people are saying. Don't get bent out of shape because of what you're feeling. He said, trust me in the process. And that's what belief is. He says, I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm not looking for a special occasion, deacon, to praise the Lord. I'll bless the Lord. His praise shall do what? Continually be in my mouth. In the good times, praise his name. In the bad times, do the same. In everything, give the king of kings all the things. This inheritance, the rights of a child or an individual or an heir to the tangible or intangible property of their father 
on the father's death. Mm. You got to be born into it. You got to be born into this family. The resurrection of Jesus guarantees not the probability or the possibility, but the reality of living eternally with him. That's what the resurrection is really about, is us joining him in eternity. Listen, the scriptures say, and the obituary columns prove every day in the newspaper that it is appointed unto man once to die. The obituary columns, unfortunately, have been full. Sometimes in small Bermuda, there are two pages of obituaries. It is appointed unto man. And the only thing is that we don't know when that appointment is. And but you have to understand that when I trust Christ, I believe that this mortal one day, see, see these graves out here? One day they're going to open up without anybody cracking the cement. You better hear what the Spirit's saying. These graves are going to open up and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And if we're in here having church, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And ever, I say to you, we're going to be with the Lord. The resurrection of Jesus assures and guarantees not the possibility or the probability, but the reality. I close with this. How does all of this that we've talked about, how does this affect or impact our lives? Your life, you have to ask yourself that question. The person sitting next to you cannot answer this question for you. It's just like I was here and I was speaking directly to you and there was nobody else in the room. That's how important this message is. Remember, this affects and impacts your life. It means something to you. It has relevance to your life. Listen, Jesus gave his life for you. And now he wants to give his life to you. The sacrifice is over. The gift is now being presented. Gave his life, gave up, gave up everything for you, for me. Yeah. Now, he says, I want to give you what my father gave me. That is eternal life. My faith and my trust. If you have ever received him, something happened on the inside of you. And Jesus said this. If a man or person really believes in me, if you really believe, he says, out of his belly, out of his innermost being, will flow rivers of living water. I interpret it like this. If he's ever touched you, you tell somebody. If he's really saved you, you tell somebody. If he means something to you, you tell somebody. It will just flow out of you almost instinctively. That when you come to know him and depend upon him and I've been made one of his children, I qualify as a lawful heir for the inheritance. I hope you're happy about it. Job said this, if a man die... That's what Job asked the question. If a man die, shall he live again? This was way back. Job was saying, if a man die, shall he live again? And this is what Job said. I'll paraphrase it. Job says, I'll wait. 
He says, I'm going to wait till my change comes. He says, I sense something. Something's coming. Something's coming better than this. You, you know the story of Job. Job went through. He says, but I'm waiting. He said, this, it's going to get better. He says, listen, I'm going to a place <laughs> where the wicked, <laughs> where the wicked will cease from troubling and the weary shall be at rest and all of the saints of the ages shall sit at his feet and be blessed. Here's the danger. The new birth, the spiritual birth is beyond man's ability to know. Don't try to dissect it if you haven't experienced it. Jesus said the wind blows where it will. He says you hear it sound and you feel it, but he says you don't know where it comes from, you don't know where it's going. In the morning in Bermuda, the winds are out of the north, in the afternoons they burn southeast. How, who, he, who's controlling that? He said the winds and the waves still obey, obey me. He said the new birth is beyond man's ability to know, comprehend, fathom, investigate, dissect, or reason. I have some of my former friends that went off into a tangent, come around, want to reason. I, I don't want to reason. Talk to me about Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Let's fellowship. Don't talk about what's dividing us. Talk about what's uniting us. You know what unites us? The blood of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The plan, the purpose, the power of Jesus. Don't try to dissect it. Just accept it by faith. There are so many, too many, who talk about their connection. Oh, I know the Lord. You hear them in town. They walk across you. Oh, I, they can quote scripture. They, we do a whole lot of stuff. Oh, I know him. I'm, and we talk about our connection. But Jesus says, if you are connected, then where's your commitment? Where's the commitment Jesus says to you? If you are connected, he says, come follow me. Let your light so shine before men. And connection is like a carpenter's term. My connection and my commitment must dovetail. My daddy was a carpenter. And he used to bring dovetails and make stuff that would connect together. It looked the same. One side looked like this, and the other side looked like that. And he would bring them together. This is your connection and your commitment to Christ for all that he's done for you. If you boast about your connection, let your commitment match. Let your commitment match. If you are here this morning, if you're watching by Facebook, and if you are sitting here, and if you are not even connected, I'm not talking about committed, get connected first. This altar is open for you. This is the day that life can come for you. Life for you, abundant and eternal life can come for you. If you hear the, the, if you feel the draw on the inside that says, Lord, it's me. Meet me right here. Don't put him off. Meet him right here. As Brother Chris plays something softly, there's somebody, there's more than one in here this morning that would say, that's me you're talking to, Lord. Forget the pastor. Lord, it's me. You're talking to me. I want eternal life. I want resurrection life. I want to live and listen to me, young people, and everybody in here who is under 65 is young. I qualified two years ago. If you are 65 and under, you are a young person. Listen, don't despise the day of small things. If you feel the tug, don't give Jesus your leftovers. Give of your best to the master. Give him the strength of your youth. Give him your heart. Give him full control. We hate to do that. 
but it's necessary, you'll never regret it. If you're here this morning and you don't know him, I plead with you, come to him today. Jesus, 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 there is something about that name. Would you come? Like the fragrance after the rain. You don't have to be afraid or ashamed. His name is? His name is? Jesus. Let all heaven and earth. Hello. have the resurrected Christ living in your heart and you are in this room this morning and you don't have the resurrected Christ living in your heart what you have this morning is an opportunity for new life for abundant life yes for a changed life for secure life for serene life for a life that honors God because he has honored you and I by dying and rising again. He did it for you. On my left or on my right, if you feel the tug within, that's where it comes from. It comes from within. Young or old, man or woman, come to him today. You will never never regret it. Let's sing that one more time. Jesus, oh Jesus, his name is There is something about that name. He is mine. He is mine. Oh, yes, my, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus and Jesus shall all pass away, but there's something about yes there's something about there's something yes there's something about yes there's something about yes there's something about that Father, we thank you for your presence today. We believe that your word will not return to you void. I pray that you take fear and worry out of somebody's heart that wants to come to you, that knows that they need to come to you. You are the only hope for mankind. You are the only deliverer and savior for mankind. Oh, would you grant them grace to trust you. May they do it when they drive in their car. May they do it when they get home at the dinner table. Oh God, it doesn't matter when it's done or where it's done. It matters that it's done. 
May it be done in faith, in truth, in sincerity. And may your name be praised and glorified. Bless this house, O oh Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Would you give him a good praise? this morning certainly much to encourage you about would you go out and share that with someone this week yeah amen amen yeah it really is and so we're gonna get ready to have the um presentation of our tithes and offering this morning and as we do that we're gonna sing joyfully We're going to do Christ the Lord is risen today. Amen.
again, just simply to say thank you. Thank you, God, for bountifully blessing us beyond measure. Thank you, God, for being gracious to us. And so, God, we return a small portion of what you have bountifully blessed us with. God, and we ask that you would just simply have your way. God, that you would take it and bless it and multiply it and use it in any way that you so see fit. And God, we'll continue to give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can be seated. I do have just...